Hello? Welcome in, everyone. How are we doing today? Sorry, I'm a moment late. I was chatting and it was important. Hello? <laughs> I love starting the stream like that. Hello? Is anyone in here? Hi. <laughs> Welcome in, friends. How are we doing on this Sunday? I will say I'm quite warm today. I don't know what this heat is with, like, we have the heat turned on or off in the apartment. And it's like, feels like it's cranked still. I don't know what to do. Open all the windows, I guess. We're preparing for a big snowstorm to come in today, too. Yesterday, they gave us a warning. 10 to 25 centimeters. Quite a large um, difference there from the 10 to the 25. And then this morning, it's only saying 7 now. Am I coming to YVR? I mean, I wasn't planning on it. I better start driving now. Cookie was right, lazy Sunday. It definitely is feeling like that. I was up early. I decided to get up early because I told you guys I had to go get that flour so that we could feed our starter today for the second day. And then I thought, you know what? Last time there was a snowstorm, they took like five days to get the roads cleared. So I charged up the car and we are good to go so that if I can't leave the house, I'm good to go to pick up Samo on Thursday. Laughing. Okay, I'm scrolling up, welcoming in everyone in. Bonk was first today. Timmer's cookie. Hello, yet it is Blondie. Alti went to the Home Depot. Always a fun time on a Sunday. Hi, Fortitude too. Says cooking with Caitlin. <laughs> I love saying my own name like that. Caitlin, one of the best and most versatile chefs in the whole of Canadasia. <laughs> Over there, it was sunny with 10 degrees Celsius. I think it's like hovering around zero right now. Boss man, how's it going? Okay, so we are doing quick and easy Sunday today. Like always, I found this really yummy looking spicy Italian sausage pasta recipe. So we're gonna make that today. I think I'm gonna make a little bit of a different variation though, cause I picked up some pesto pre-made from Costco because I've been kind of having a hankering for that and like for me to buy all the ingredients to make that much pesto what I purchased it for would be a lot of money so I picked that up and then I also picked up some really yummy uh, soft mozzarella that we can slice and then I thought it'd be really yummy to bake the pasta with the mozza and stuff on top hello Michael you agree with the versatile bunk? You like that I always try different things? I really do try to make different things. Like there's always a couple of those meals that we obviously love and make quite often, but definitely try to pick recipes I haven't always made before. So let's get that posted up. There's our menu as well. Once we get our pasta in the oven, I don't think it'll take very long. To make the pasta so maybe we'll work on the crackers kind of first and it can all bake together and then we'll feed the starter at the end of the day today because it was around like 2 45 p.m yesterday when we made the starter so you always have to well you don't have to but suggested that you wait around 24 hours before the next feeding so you can really see its activity and i will say it's alive it is alive and I am so excited. Hello, Diane Serpent. Do you guys want to see it? I'm actually amazed by how much it has risen just overnight. Who is this? This is Rob One. Hello, this is Rob One. You're new to our kitchen crew. Two months in a row. Thank you, Rob. Welcome. Look at this. So the, the line where we put the little elastic, that's where it was when we let it rest yesterday. So it's already risen like almost a quarter inch. So what was suggested in the recipe today, it's looking so good. And then, okay, let me switch this so you guys can see it. The top, the little bubbles, it's partying hard. 
That was from our fresh milled flour that we did on stream yesterday. So it says we got to take away half of that and then refeed it again. So I thought, well, this grain was not cheap, nor do we throw out food ever. So we always have to find a recipe to use up that discard so it doesn't just go in the garbage, right? So crackers was the thing I thought of because, well, we made chowder yesterday on stream. So having the crackers to eat with the chowder for lunch throughout the week was just like, mm, perfect. I haven't been like having a really sweet tooth lately. So that's why we haven't baked anything sweet this weekend. Good morning, Oak Oak. Does it smell good? Oh, it smells good. It smells like cereal. I want to make Wayne smell it. It smells yummy, right? Yeah. It's like sweet and kind of nutty and like just very earthy. Yummo. You went to a local pub, Mickey, and you had some beef, some roast beast. Today you had hot Javanese chicken roti with a nice Indonesian coconut drink called Sindol. That sounds delicious. Hey, I was having a little bit of a hard time picking the flowers this morning because there was so many. So I paid yesterday $11 for a kilo a kilogram of the einkorn grains. Today, I paid $9 for just the store-bought brand of an organic all-purpose flour for two and a half kilos. I was like thinking, was, like I'm pretty sure that one kilo of grains would mill into two and a half kilos almost. And then like there was a nicer one even from like not a farm-based like mill, but a local mill to the province that is pretty good. It's called Anita's Organic Mill. They had actually a really big bag of flour. It might have been like, what is this? Five and a half pounds. So it probably was a 10 pound bag, but it was 20 bucks, like $18.99. was like, yo, I can't spend that money right now on just flour. Yeah, things that make you go, hmm, right? So I just wanted to say that little comparison today because I felt like this was really expensive. And let's also say this did come from the Loblaws brand of grocery stores, which Amp told us on Friday that they just had like some of their biggest back to back sales yet. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> All right. Let's post up our recipes. I'll check them out. Oh, for this sourdough crackers recipe, the link was like 5 billion characters long. So I just linked the farm web page that it's from. And then I think you just go to the sourdough one there. Yeah. And she has all of her recipes there. I found this farm on Instagram, actually, and I started following them. Nice, Cookie. You've watched her YouTube channel, too. See? We all kind of watch the same things. It's funny. I guess I could, yeah, tiny URL convert it. This is also true, Bonk. Things that I don't think of really anymore. I suppose I would think of that if I had like a computer based job, right? Like I'd be such a professional. Okay, I'm reading through the spicy Italian sausage pasta recipe. So Mish made this yesterday for her and her partner in Denmark. And she actually made a not spicy version because her partner can't eat too much spice, but she said it was really good. So I'm very excited for this. They say it's fast, easy, uses minimal ingredients, the perfect weeknight dinner, or if you make it on a Sunday, kind of like meal prep, lunches for the week. They say it tastes like it came from a restaurant. Hi, Mish.
They say why you'll love it. Italian sausage and pasta is a magical combo. This pasta recipe is ideal for the sausage and carb lovers out there. So I'm going to be using just the gluten-free fusilli again, the little bit that we have left from the last cook. They say spicy Italian sausage. So I actually have a mild Italian sausage because I much prefer to add my own amount of spice in the version of chili flakes and it's snowing. So I found in the past when I've made a spicy Italian sausage pasta and the sausage is already spicy, when you go to put that in the sauce and like kind of simmer it all together, I find it gets even spicier. So I don't love food when it feels like it's almost too spicy to enjoy eating. So I'll just add like a pinch or so of chili flakes when we make the sauce. Control it that way. So they say the Italian sausage, tomatoes, garlic, cream, lots of Parmesan cheese, and a touch of basil make this recipe a winner. I have dried basil that we're going to use. I dried it myself, so I find that's always better tasting than the weird flavor you get from the store-bought dried basil, which I find tastes very sweet and like fake. So all I did was buy a bunch of fresh basil when it was on sale from the store and dehydrated it in the full leaf form. They say the sauce is creamy, but not too creamy, if you know what I mean. It's tomatoey first and foremost. And she even says that she's not a huge spice person and she really enjoyed the dish. Says it's ready in about 30 minutes. I'm sure if you were feeling up to that, you could do it. It'll probably take us a bit longer than that to bring it together for ourselves, just because we all learn together. Hi, Scooter, welcome in. Mods don't fight, we collaborate. <laughs> that is true, actually. I don't know if we've ever had a mod war of sorts, other than gambling. Bonk, you like a blush sauce with a little bit of crushed red pepper mixed in. Yeah, right? That's kind of what I'm going for, too. You chop up basil and other herbs and mix with olive oil and freeze it. Good idea. Just chunk off pieces when you need it. Or I've seen people pour that into ice cube trays and then you just pop out the little cubes that way. You made this, Scoots? That's funny. And it was good. So they say you could also use chicken broth or white wine. So I'm going to use our chicken bone broth. <laughs> Cookie, it's true. Yeah. When worse comes to worse, you guys just gang up on me. But I know it's out of love. All right, so we pre-cook the pasta ahead of time. We take the sausage out of the casing and just brown it in a pan. And then we add our garlic, chicken broth, and a little bit of flour to thicken the sauce. I'll probably leave the flour out and just make sure that we make our sauce nice enough before we add the pasta that it's not gonna be runny. Plus, let's also say, when you add the pasta into the sauce, and because we're baking it, it's already gonna thicken up that sauce just with the starch being around it, right? The pasta noodles are gonna continue to absorb it. That's why like baked pastas aren't the easiest to do in really large portions. But they're really good to do for like a couple people in a skillet like how we're gonna do today. But I like how you do the sauce and everything just in the one pan because you keep all of those flavors together, right? She says, I like penne for this one, but you're welcome to use another shape if you wish. I think it's rotini or fusilli we have today. I would suggest definitely like a penne is good because the sauce goes into the noodle. I like fusilli and rotini because I find that it also kind of gets nicely coated in the sauce. Bow ties might be good for this too. Nothing too like noodle-esque like a spaghetti or linguine or pappardelle. It just would be really difficult to serve I think once it's all brought together. 
That's all my notes I got. She says, I don't recommend substituting the cream for something with less fat because it may curdle the sauce and then it has like a weird texture and consistency, right? And then if you wanted to make it spicier than what your sausage already was, you can even add more chili flakes at the end too. Some people like to have like the little shaker, the little Parmesan and chili flake shakers. That's allowed. Store it in the fridge for three to four days. I would say anything cooked can stay in the fridge up to a week if you're really clean, like putting it away and stuff. If it get, if it curdles right, it just gets tossed. Oof. Oof. I will say though, there have been times where I've used like a lactose free milk in a cream soup instead of a cream to keep it dairy free. And that doesn't curdle compared to the milk that has the lactose in it still. Just a note for some of you that may be lactose free. That's called the curdle hurdle. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't even want to imagine. Guys, I think Samo made it to bed. Did you see his notes in Discord? Oh my goodness. They had a bad night last night, let's just say that. And it lasts longer before spoiling. I like that too then, Bonk, right? That was frightening, Cookie. Let's just say no one called the code red in time. And like at 11 o'clock, he still wasn't back at camp. And like he usually is sleeping at seven in the morning. Someone's getting in heck. But let's get into it. I don't even know if we really need a list today. I'm going to put the crackers first on here so that we can get them mixed up. We'll get our crackers ready to go on the sheet pan. We have to boil our pasta noodles. Let's say fry the sausage. And then after that, make the sauce. Let's not forget the soft matzo and the pesto is two like extra little things I'm adding for myself. I think the pesto will just kind of dollop on the dish after it's been baked, but the matzo is getting baked on for sure. It was a bit scary. Definitely can be scary. I mean, you're smart enough when you work at that site to know to not do dumb things, but it also is unfortunate that some of the people have to get pushed to that point, right? Okay, da, 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 our soft matzo and pesto. And let's just say the last thing is we'll bake it. And then we feed the starter, the baby. And I realized that yesterday we didn't name it. I didn't make a note of that. But the starter's name is Goldilocks number four. <laughs> that was the name of my first starter ever that I made in 2017 when we worked at the brewery and started making sourdough bread. And well, I've made three other variations until now. So Goldilocks is coming back to life. Is it kind of dark in here guys or is that okay? Maybe we'll get one more light on for us. Okay, so our crackers. Bring our discard over. The heck, it's like rising even more. Or is this thing just going down? I think the elastic's just going down. Not Astra, cause it'll be astronomically good. I need to go see that poo bum soon. I've been talking to my bro. We're starting to make some plans. We'll eat some tacos in March. <laughs> what happened to the other three? They went back to the earth. <laughs> okay, so I'll probably make like a half batch of the crackers. Share some Astra picks. I will. I will. I didn't even get any of her last time. Okay, let me find this cracker recipe. Can we just search on this blog? Maybe not.
Yes, we can. I'm just going to do this an easier way for myself. Just copy it from Discord. Does it not sag right into the article you post on Discord? Yes, it does. And that's why I like instantly read that today when you posted it, Bonk. All right, so our sourdough Discord, Discord crackers, it sounds like Discord. Ugh. This recipe was made on September 9th, 2022. These homemade herb seasoned sourdough crackers are deliciously tangy, crisp, and buttery. Perfect way to use up excess starter or discard. The whole wheat cracker recipe makes a great snack or an appetizer. Some tips will roll the cracker dough between greased sheets of parchment paper. And we want it to roll out really thin. And I will say from experience, if you don't roll crackers out thin enough, they bake up very odd and like stay kind of soft and weird. So really go thin. Not so thin that you like see through it. You'll see what I mean. She says, I like using einkorn flour for the crackers because it's not a fermented recipe. Einkorn is naturally easier to digest than regular flour, which is what this starter is made out of. Scrolling. I'm scrolling. She did a really good job writing out this recipe. She even put photos so you can see how it looks when she's rolling it out. And I'm gonna do a, a little bit of a different variation than hers with the herbs. We're gonna do like an everything flavored cracker today because I've had that in the past and it's so good. So one cup of sourdough discard. So we'll probably use the half a cup. And then for that, either three quarters of a cup of AP flour or one cup of the einkorn. I'm just gonna use this AP flour, I think. We do put butter in here, so that's why she said it tastes buttery. I think that will make the texture of the cracker really nice too. And then just a tablespoon of your flavorings and a teaspoon of salt. Mix everything and knead it until it comes together. Roll it out. Bake at 350 for 15 minutes until it's crispy. 350 Fahrenheit, 15 minutes. Write that on your thing. And just cut up with a knife or break apart afterwards. That couldn't be easier. Let's get a bowl. And a cup measure for sure. Half cup up. With a spoon. And then I'm going to just put the starter back in the room where it's a little bit warmer. So first, we're going to stir this all up. Not just scoop off the top. And look at how that has totally changed from yesterday after we mixed it up. Look at all that protein rich gluten, you guys. <laughs> I can't even scoop it. I don't want to mess up the sides of the containers. So that's why I'm being really particular how I do this. Mish just got asked to make coconut ice cream for a friend's Asian themed dinner party. Making ice cream for 14 people. How many liters do you have to make? Do you like gauge a certain amount of ice cream per person to eat? I'm gonna go one more small scoop and that should be half. So that's literally perfect for this. 
I also thought crackers were a smart first recipe to make with the discard because the discard's not super active yet. So choosing a recipe where nothing really has to rise, but you get all the benefit from the fermentation in it just overnight, I thought was smart. And then as this gets more active over these next three weeks, we can choose different recipes to use it up with. And then I did leave the lid on this container just slightly propped off the whole time so that it could off gas. So there's that. Next we'll grab our flour. I think I have to melt it or soften a little bit of butter. And then let's grab the flavorings. The everything spice. So this is what I'm going to mix into the cracker. I have to go back and look what you made last time for six people. And it's 14 men. <laughs> so double what you made if it was ladies last time. That's hilarious, Mish. Yeah, everything bagel spice and crackers is legendary bonk. There's this brand of crackers at the store, actually, that use this in it, and that's why I'm doing that today. Because I went to go buy those crackers the other day. No joke, it was like $11 for like six crackers, gluten-free. I was like, well, that's not happening. <laughs> okay, how much butter? So half of a quarter cup is what we need. Kind of measure this out and then I'll soften it. Such a small amount. Okay, that's the one cup. Half. Haven't done them in a while, Scoots. The last time you used your pasta roller for the KitchenAid. Now that seems smart. And it worked pretty good. I'm making a really small batch today. So I probably won't need to go that far. And I could probably say it also depends on what kind of cracker dough you're using, right? But that is a very smart suggestion. Oh, I don't need to do that. Let's do like 20 seconds. Some of the best crackers I've ever made and come up with were when we were at the brewery and doing this like kind of farm pop up with the university. We did spent grain cheddar crackers that tasted almost like Cheez-Its. And then we topped it with beef tartare from a local farm. Man, that was good. Okay, it's not softened or even melted yet. More. Yeah, people don't realize how easy crackers actually are to make and much less expensive than buying them from the store. <laughs> it's almost a full whiteout outside already. Wayne, you're not going nowhere. <laughs> There's our butter. Okay, so I'm gonna measure in the flour first, I think. Put the dry bits on the bottom and then add everything else on top. So half of three quarters of a cup. That's actually true what you were saying, Cookie, noticing that like milled flours don't last that long. This flour goes bad in only one year. That doesn't last very long. 
Mish, you're not gonna be like the 40 pound flower lady from yesterday. No, you'll be the 40 liter ice cream lady instead. Hello? I wanna get into the bag. <laughs> Please? Yeah, freshly milled flowers at your local mill won't even last that long. I hope you have good insurance too. Imagine that accident. <laughs> that would make the newspaper, Mish. Fort flower. <laughs> yeah, at least the bag is sealed and it's not like splooting out the sides everywhere as you're carrying it, because that's the worst. Okay, so half of three quarters of a cup. What does that even mean? So now you guys understand why when we bake, everything is measured in grams. Because how do we scale this from here? You know what I'm saying? I just have to eyeball it, really. Let's go with that. I mean, we could always add more if we think it's too wet, right? But what we can't add more of is starter. Should we do the butter with the flour and then the starter? I'm trying to think about how this is all gonna mix together when there's no like actual liquid. Probably be easier to just put all this in a food processor. But this is like so little of an amount that probably nothing would even happen. Yeah, I think we'll do this. Get it kind of flaked and mixed in. Should crackers have a stiff dough? Like I said earlier, I, I would say it depends on the cracker you're trying to make, right? Because there's lots of different types of crackers out there. From the ones that I have made in the past though, is it really a stiff dough? I'm trying to find the best word to describe it. Yeah, we can say that. I <laughs> just make one cracker. Well, it will be that when it first comes out and then we just break it up afterwards. So this is where like all of our moisture is gonna come from, right? And so when we started Goldilocks yesterday, they suggested a half amount of liquid to the flour we ended up using a one-to-one -one, cause th there's no way that it would have worked otherwise. And we did that with an educational decision from past times that some of us have made sourdough and it's always a one-to-one -one ratio. Oh, well, this is going a okay. I'm not gonna add the spices in yet because I don't want to like get them too crushed up. We'll probably just sprinkle them on top actually before it bakes. Look at all that gluten. Maybe a bit more flour I would say because this is very like stretchy still and there's no way that you could roll it out without it springing back. Add very small amount at a time. And then we still gotta add one ingredient, which is a very important one you don't wanna forget. Salt. They say a teaspoon of salt, so we're going a half teaspoon. Something like that. The salt's not gonna make it like more dry, so let's just do a bit of that again. Whoa. 
that's a crazy pop-up ad on the recipe that I was looking at. This looks like it's gonna be really hard to roll out, you guys. Maybe we do need to get the pasta roller out. Fada what? I'm switching to my hands. I need to see how this feels. That's feeling pretty dang good, actually. Yeah, get out the half teaspoon measurement. It's a little sticky to my hands, you guys can see. I tried to like knead it a bit. That's why I left that flour container in there. When we knead, we press and fold. I haven't kneaded like this in forever. But you'll know that you have enough flour in the mix when it doesn't really stick to your skin anymore. And it's all like coming together off the sides of the bowl. I think we're gonna roll with that, guys. That's a good sticky mix. Let me wash my hands up and get the sheet pan and the prepared parchment. Definitely soak that bowl because that dough will stick on forever. how this is gonna work. Holy, see, I told you, he didn't even make it back. Have a good sleep, my dearly. What are they trying to do to that guy up there? We got an FCB in here, and he's coming in first thing and gifting the sub to Red Syrup 27, who is now part of our kitchen crew. How are you doing today, FCB? Let's get our sheet pan next. I mean, let's, we don't really need a sheet pan for this first part. We can just do this. Ooh, look at how sticky it is. I need a bench scraper. It's still sticky, you guys. This is why she said we need it greased up. This might take the whole stream to roll out. Get on there. Okay, now I'm just spraying this before we put the dough on. Get greased up. A good layer, like cover the whole sheet. Cause I don't know how much this is gonna roll out. Better to be safe than sorry. Now we go plop. Shouldn't stick to that. And then I'm just gonna go over here, spray the same way and then put that one on top. So that the shapes matched itself. Okay, progress. 
And that feels better now that I don't have to directly touch it and it's not just sticking on my hands. I'm gonna turn it this way. Move the flower bay. Couple more things. Now this marble rolling pin, there's a lot of weight to it, right? So I'm not even really pressing on it. Just let the weight of the pin do most of the work at first. So yeah, you see how it kind of springs back the cracker dough. So we might have to do a couple rolls, let it relax a little bit, and then try and get it thinner again. This is more dough than I anticipated, you guys. Whoa, it splitted out the side. That actually looks so cool though. Look at that. That's pretty thin. I might have to work some of it more close that way. But holy shit, it's working. Also, don't let the paper like kind of shrink up. You see how that's happening? I don't like this edge. If that happens, let's just grab the bench scraper because it's going to go off this side. Just give it a little slice and we'll just pop it up here where it's too thin. Same with this more. It's allowed. Whoa, there's so much. <laughs> the good news is it's not sticky anymore. The butter is doing its job. Guys, we're gonna need like two pans. <laughs> okay, it's a little bit thin there. That's so many cracker scoots. I don't even know what to do right now. I think I gotta split it. Just trim off some of the excess around the edge. I'm just gonna do a little switcheroo here. Flip that back onto the paper. Put this other greased sheet here. Hey, it's a learning process, right? Where is it like pretty thick still? It's pretty thick like all up here. So I'm just gonna trim this off. Imagine a rolling pin that's marble rolling off of your counter. That'd be so dang loud. See how I'm not crumpling it up, guys? Just laying it flat. And this was half of the recipe even. That's kind of wild. Okay, maybe just a little on this side. And then we're good. And I'll just go get one more sheet of parchment to cover this, because this is already greased. It's not gonna stick again. Then we can even out some of these edges, get it onto the pan. I didn't expect to get two two sheep pens out of this. How 
hello, it's Lauren. Hi, Lauren. You're headed out to make pasta for your parents? Feta would be great on a cracker. Yeah, right? Leftover crackers for like dips, charcuterie snacks. Why the heck not? Nothing wrong with that. Plus I got a Samo coming home. Lift this up. Ooh. Move it down. Do I use peanuts? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Where is this going, you guys? Okay, let's also say this. When you're making crackers, you don't have to, like, make it square. Because when you break it up after it's baked, it's really not going to matter. It's just a little bit thick up in this area still. I'm going to roll it out like this way. Ugh. This is so wild, this dough. It just keeps growing. But it's looking more and more perfect every time we roll it farther. I'm gonna stop over here though. Like we're just going off of the paper now. If it's a little bit chewy on that one end, that's okay. Okay, ready? Uh, see, it went off the side. Fine, we'll just trim it. Put it on the other paper again. Get on there. At least it doesn't stick to my hands now, though. Okay, so lifting that <laughs> kind of gently. Flop it on the sheet pan. That worked good, actually. Look. Nice marble roller. Thanks, Samovar. Hi, Trekker. There she is. Crackers. First rendition. He actually just made it back, Trekker. I don't know if you were in here yet, but he gave us a nice little message here on Twitch. He just made it back, so now he's gonna go to bed. Lauren! Thank you very much. We missed ya. Thank you for the prime game and sub girl. 34 months in a row. Are we gonna bake the, the discard discards? Oh, hell yeah, we are. We just gotta roll it back together. It needed to be fixed. Love you, thank you. <laughs> Ooh, she's a bit thin on this end. And actually a couple places there. That's gonna be real crispy. When you can like see through the dough. If that happens, I mean, you could always just fold it back onto itself. Maybe that's why she said she used her hands a little bit. Cause yeah, it's not sticking at all. What is this reminding me of? Like kind of this crispy flatbread. Is it called lavash? Is that what it's called? I mean, it might not be exactly how crackers are made, but these are how Kate's crackers are made. All right, we'll just get rid of that. That's a lot of crackers.
and then we'll sprinkle our spices on our flavorings this end is bugging me but if we just do that aha lovely hi madam Lavash is thicker though, right? More like a crepe thickness. And does it have like kind of crispy layers? I don't know how this is going to turn out because the butter, right? Like a lot of times when you put butter into pastry, the moisture in it makes things puff up. We don't know what it's going to be. This one looks much nicer. Okay, so for flavoring, she suggested herbs in the recipe I linked, but we're gonna do our own variation, everything bagel seasoning. There is a little bit of salt in this, and then there's salt in the cracker too, so just be aware of that. Hi Greek, how are you doing? Welcome in. So this is sesame seeds, garlic, onion, salt, poppy seeds, I think. Yeah all of those things and it should stick really nice onto the top and then these bake for 15 minutes at 350 degrees fahrenheit i guess we can get them in the oven soon because we'll probably bake the pasta at a higher temp than 350. i don't know about this like edge here I'll just move that a bit off. It's going to bake into a funny shape, but that'll be cool. Okay, I think that looks good. Put them back here. We'll turn on the oven. I'll go 360 because mine's usually a little cool. Okay, I see that we got some oil and stuff on the board. I'm just going to give it a wipe. And degrease my cracker hands. Last night for the pasta, Lauren. Use 600 grams of flour, 300 grams of yolk and water. And for some reason it was way too much flour, but you made it work. I'll tell you this. I've never put water into pasta dough. I've only ever done flour, egg, both yolk and whole, and then just olive oil at the end to bring it together. I believe someone linked a screenshot of that recipe in Discord. Let me try and search for it really quick for you. Cause I've, that's a fail safe recipe that lots of restaurants use. Kate pasta, I think they called it. Kate's pasta recipe, Cookie posted it. There we go. Thanks Cookie. <laughs> Once upon a time, right. Cause you made like lasagna or something with it, didn't you? So yeah, search Kate's pasta recipe in Discord. Cookie typed it all out. Thank you for his services. And then you can scale it yourself because it's all in grams already, really easy. Did we say how much it made though? I think I usually do a half recipe. Cause it makes a lot, right? <laughs> Okay, hey, get this wiped off. I can't stop watching the snow outside. The snow is just like directly horizontal, how it's blowing. It's a little distracting. I'm making you jealous? Why?
Okay, let's put things away that we don't need. Oh, <laughs> you're tired of looking at your kids, so you need a snow day. I was tired of looking out at the brown grass, I will say that. Hello, winter? All right, I will return with our pasta noodles so that we can get our pot on for that. Our Rummo Fuzili. It was actually so cool. Mish, are you in here? That was the wrong light. Mish. I got so excited when I watched Berta's last video. We watched this girl on YouTube that lives in Copenhagen because she used Rummo pasta in her YouTube video. I got so excited she made like a pistachio pesto pasta. So awesome. I was gonna message you, but I was like, maybe that's a bit weird. <laughs> So yeah, we used this before. It's so, so good. It's actually gluten-free. This one is chickpea and brown rice. Cooks in nine to 10 minutes. And yeah, we made tuna noodle casserole last time baked and it was so dang good together. So I thought, hey, use up the last half of the bag and make another skillet pasta today. I am weird, you've accepted it. Oh, phew. Okay, I won't worry next time then. Pistachio pesto pasta. Like make your pesto and then grind pistachio nuts into it. It is really delicious. It's quite expensive, right? But it is really delicious. Okay, let's get a little medium sized pot filled with water so we can get that cooked. And then I'll start getting all the other ingredients for the pasta out. If you're not weird, what are you on about? This, there's never been like a truer statement. <laughs> like the one meme I posted on Instagram today. It's like, how do you sleep knowing that people hate you with the fan on? I'll probably only need that half filled <laughs> track record. <laughs> At least I have a fan. Yeah, with the sourdough by my side too. It lived on this side table the whole night. It was so happy. Okay, so we got to make the pasta water taste like the sea. Salty like the sea. I just filled the pot halfway. Yeah, we don't definitely don't need it full. Who that? Seshers, thank you for the follow and welcome in. So now, just pop a lid on that, turn it to medium high heat, and then we'll come over once it's boiling and cook the noodles. <laughs> you liked it, White Dove? <laughs> All right, so if I can recall what we talked about when we were going through the recipe, I need to take the sausage out of the casing. I have two forms of tomatoes for this because we had some leftover whole San Marzano's from what we used in our chowder yesterday. And then I also had this in the freezer, a tomato basil pasta sauce. So whether we need all of it, I'm not quite sure. What does she say for the tomato amount today? Sounds wild back there. When there's just a little bit of water on the bottom of the pot and it's like crackling on the burner. It's a little scary. Just one 14 ounce can of diced tomatoes. So probably just this then. 
this sauce that I already have. And it's a little chunky looking still. I'll just freeze that leftover. So I already like have a sauce, it's flavored. But I think we'll still pop some garlic in there for sure. We need half a cup of chicken broth measured out as well as half a cup of cream. So equal parts to that. Do we and can we add that to the same container? No, because would we deglaze the pan with the chicken broth. So do not combine it with the cream to save dishes. I like it a bit chunky too. I will say I'm still on the fence. Like I might still just crush up those whole San Marzano's and then just pour a little bit of this in rather than using the sauce. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, I'll grab some containers for our liquids. I got the sausages here. We'll take out of the casing. And that's pretty much it, guys. Really, really easy. And then we'll get those crackers in momentarily. Cream. These are actually Costco sausages because I think we got a pack on sale last time Sam was home and then I just kind of divvied it up and into the freezer so I just took out two for myself. But I would say yeah like the best sausages I've ever had definitely come from a butcher shop rather than a grocery store. Because I'm pretty particular about sausage. Like, I really don't like the gristle and stuff. And I find the grocery store ones always have, like, a little bit in it. But, yeah, right? Even, like, what? I grew up, my mom would get sometimes the honey garlic sausages from Costco and, like, fry that up for brunch. It was so dang good with pancakes. But these are just the mild Italian. Okay, so our liquids are over by the stove. That, anything else in here? The garlics? Actually, I know what we're gonna add. Why would I even mess around with fresh stuff? We'll just pop in some of our roasted garlic cloves into the sauce. When it's coming together in the pan, On your side of Canada, you have a grocery star store called Fortino's and you like their sausages. Bratz Barese, is that how you say that? I've never heard of that variety. And Italian? Need a sip of water, guys. You should have one too. It's raining. I'm surprised it's snowing. It's only minus one, like just cold enough to snow. Okay, so this is how I usually take sausage out of the casing. Yes, it looks gross, but whatever. So I usually like split it in the middle and then give it a twist. And then you can just like squeeze out each side. Thin, thin, long veal sausages. That sounds really good. Greek says there's a store called Pooza Terry's in Ontario that does their sausages in store and they're really good. I really miss Glenwood on the island. Every week they would have like different feature sausages to buy. Mmm, the lamb ones. Holy. And it's really fun to actually make sausage yourself. We'll probably get into that more. The 
if we're really gonna go down the homestead route the rest of the year, guys, there's no excuse that I can't do it here. Start living that part of the life. I just don't have the land yet. So then from here, I usually break it up a little bit. I like my sausage pretty chunky. In pastas, not super fine like how she had it minced up and fried it. Like kind of one inch pieces is what I pick apart. Your mom always removes the sausage from the casing. She likes it dry and crispy. Crispy sausage is yummy. Like, oh, when you do that and then make sausage gravy after. What the heck? Yum, Lauren. It's a pasta kind of day, I guess, hey? I hope it all turns out. And feel free to share your creation in Discord later. And also say hi to your parents. Right? Yeah. Finely minced meat and sauce will give more like a meat sauce bolognese vibes. It's true, bonk. I thought we were just going to like have our sausages sliced in medallions for this, but this is different. Imagine all the possibilities. I died. <laughs> okay, I'm popping the crackers into the oven. No one saw them yet. This is what they look like. I'm going to set a 10 minute timer and then go from there. They say 15 on the recipe. I don't know if that's accurate or not. All right, put that over by the stove top. <laughs> oh no, Wayne. <laughs> Guys, we got a note at the door. <laughs> I actually really appreciate that though. That's very nice of them. <laughs> Lauren says, we'll buy a bunch of land, start a garden, farm to table, restaurant, house, community of peeps, and a yoga studio. There is one of these already being built in Austin, and I forget what it's called. There's two more being created in Ontario, and that's all I could find. But it's a community that's built like on the side of a farm with tiny homes, and then you have access to the farm, and like everyone takes care of each other. Just the coolest thing ever. It was like $1,100. So similar to a commune, yes. But they called it something different. <laughs> I wouldn't be opposed to that either though, let's be honest. Okay, so I'm kind of going off like what Bonk said. I think I want more like chunky, plain sort of tomatoes rather than having a sauce already made. But we need a certain amount, so we'll chunk up these whole tomatoes in here and then just pour a little bit of this to finish off what we need. Our water's already boiling, that's insane. This oven is going today. Commune with Kate? I'm not kidding, I love it. <laughs> yeah. Mickey, you went back to the pub and got Sunday lunch? Look at this, flying, bubbling, crazy. It says nine to 10 minutes. I'm just gonna go on the timer on my watch, which is seven minutes and 50 seconds. Definitely give that a stir though. Just do that. Come back and stir it a few times. Hello, Nike. Hello, Katniss. How are you doing? I haven't had the Romo spaghetti yet. It's amazing, Bob. Okay, I gotta try it. 
Okay, I'm just going in with my hands. This is how I like to crush up the whole tomatoes. And then the rest will just cook out into the sauce. Sometimes it feels weird when you do this, but other times it's really satisfying. You know what they always say, don't play with your food. Oh yeah, Lauren, Nike's back. There's one more, I think. Fishing. Okay, we still have to slice up a little bit of the soft matzah. How does this feel? I don't like when it's too stringy, that feels good. It looks like I'm dismembering a heart. The tomato's heart. <laughs> Bob, thank you very much. Gift in the sub to Johnny Rodden, AKA Nike. He's been with us for years. Bob, what did you make with the spaghetti when you made it? Okay, just pour in this to top this up. At least we get some nice basil in there then. And then I'll downsize that. Haha, -ha. we're getting there. Hey guys, this is what we got. <laughs> That's actually exciting. Okay, so a note from the upstairs neighbors saying they're apologizing for their kids because they don't understand that they're being too loud, but they are on the list right now. They're the first ones on the list to get the ground floor unit in this building. So they said in the next like one or two months, they'll probably be moving down. That's actually really nice of them to like do. Like just let me know that you are aware of the problem. I'm okay with this now. We can work with this. Bob, you made it with chicken bolognese. I've never had a chicken bolognese. That sounds good though. Very healthy. Very healthy indeed. Would the Italians allow a chicken bolognese? Maybe if that's all they had to use. <laughs> the crackers are sizzling. They're sizzling. You're making a double batch today. You're going to freeze it all. Nice. I love doing that with sauces. Hey, this is getting nuts. I don't think we can put the lid back on. Right? Yeah, we can deal with the noise now knowing that. I was pretty aggressive this morning because like I was away. I got home at 730 in the morning from my errands and it was nuts already. And so I just like do it back. I think they got the gist of it. Cause Wayne was laughing at me, he heard me. She's like, or he's like, oh, Kate's upset. Just seeing where we're at, it's still crunchy. It's still crunchy. I got home at 7.30. I left at 6.30. Went to charge the car. So I didn't have to wait for anyone at the charger. And then I went to buy the flower. Cause the one store opens at 7 AM. I love it. I 
I've been getting up at 6 lately. It's weird. I just can't sleep in. I want a little bit more basil than what we have there. Maybe. Yeah, that is super considerate. Because they don't have to be, let's be honest. We all pay to live here. So cool. Things are happening. Awesome. My nervous system will relax a bit. <laughs> okay, let's get our skillet out. That we're gonna bake this all together in. The same one as last time. This is a good skillet for a single person. What is this? Size 26 centimeters? Must be. Would you be considered a watch pot? Yes, you would, Michael, due to the view of the camera being pointed to the pot. You're literally watching the pot and it's not boiling. Stop. <laughs> yeah, Bong, right? Beggars can't be choosers. Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> Just have musicians move in. I'd just go sleep in the car at that point, I think. Put the car on camp mode in the parkade. Put the shades up. We're good to go. <laughs> right, Cookie? It doesn't matter. They're just like that. Bob, thank you for also gifting the sub to Michael. Welcome to the kitchen crew, my dude. Thank you, Mish for not doing any services. <laughs> Timer, five seconds, perfect. Are we almost there now? I'm gonna turn this off for a moment while we check on the crackers first. Whoa, it's done. It wasn't browning when I looked at it, like what, a moment ago? It's browned. That was on the bottom rack. Okay, so let's see this one on the top rack. We need to go more. Maybe more of a um, central oven rack here. I'm just gonna do a quick switcheroo, guys. I don't know, do you think that's too dark? Maybe not. Let's see. I want to taste it. It doesn't taste burnt. Okay. Let's keep rolling then. But where it's not browned, I will say, it's not crispy. There's that. Let's do two minutes at a time. In the meantime, I'm just gonna strain our noodles. Kill all the fruit flies that were living in the sink. Pour the boiling water down. I think we did a little bit of an oil on the noodles last time after they were cooked. So I'll just go grab a bit of olive oil to mix in so they don't stick together while we make the sauce in the pan. I like how much these noodles hold together. The texture is awesome, I have to say. Boom. I'm gonna move that there. My oven exhausts out of this burner, so if you put anything there to kind of like cool, it'll keep cooking. 
Not too much browning yet. Let's turn this pan onto medium heat. A little bit of olive oil to get the sausage frying starting, but we shouldn't need too much. So this is two servings. It'll probably be closer to three, four from like what, how I eat. I mean, I, he's probably not putting the grease down the drain, Greek, but you know how there's sometimes just a residual bit in there or like from the previous people even, you don't know what they do, right? Yeah, there's always a little bit on the plates too. You got three servings out of yours yesterday, Mish. There's so little pasta. Yeah, it's only for me. Just enough to fill the skillet. I'm just grabbing a spoon. Spread this out a little bit more. Nice. It was a joke, Greek. <laughs> Sometimes I can't tell. Oh, and then wait, we didn't do anything about our spice in our spicy pasta. So let me go pick out some chili flakes. What do I got? Probably this one will be the best. I just really like the flavor of these ones. It's like an Asian dried chili, but just a pinch of that is so good. Chinese dried chili. <laughs> Did you just Annie yourself? <laughs> Illegal. <laughs> Some of our you marinated chicken breast in sesame, salt, and pepper. You're gonna make a stir fry. Yeah, yeah. So the last of the basmati in there too. That's gonna be good. Stir fries are so easy. Good way to use up stuff from the fridge too. <laughs> Greek. Sesame oil is actually really good. But used sparingly, because I find that sometimes it can be a bit overpowering. Also, there's a lot of like different versions of sesame oil. Okay, I'm not actually going to move this around too much. I just wanted to see how it was cooking, because we do want to get a lot of color onto the sausage. That one got a little dark. But it probably still tastes good. See, I just want to show you how this is baking. So the outer edges are baking first. Because this was the front of the oven, I'm just going to swivel this tray around. At least it's all crispy. Yo, that actually tastes so good still. Why doesn't it taste burnt? Why doesn't it taste burnt? It's so nutty and good. You examine your oyster sauce again after your discussion yesterday. I have a rooster brand of oyster sauce. And hi, Oiliana, how have you been? Oh, sorry, La Yu is your sesame oil? What's mine? I have pure, pure sesame oil, Kadoya from Japan.
Lee Kum Ki. We know that one. That is allowed. <laughs> Am I making anything for dessert today? I'm actually not. I know usually I bake one sweet thing each week on stream, but I haven't had a sweet tooth this whole week. I thought maybe I would have one today, but I was still feeling more savory, so that's why we made crackers. Okay, a little bit of browning on the sausage. That sounds so good. Whoa, it's like splashing. So get a container to put the sausage back into. After it's fried, because we make the sauce without it in the pan. Almost there on the cracker. Just not getting that center done. Hmm. La Yu means spicy oil. Day is complete. We just learned something. Do I just break off the edges, you think? That's what I'm gonna do. It's so dang hot. But it's still floppy in the center. Hiya! Nice. Da. Don't be scared to be a little aggressive with your food sometimes. The middle tastes good, actually. I just needed to get into there. Okay, I'm gonna turn it off. So I don't have to go as dark. Because even this... Oh, maybe the center center is a bit chewy, so I should put it back in. But I like the flavor. And it's still crunch. It could also be just because it's warm. Let's leave that there for now to cool. I'll get the sheet pan that's hot out of here. Okay. First cracker rendition. So far, so good. This should all be cooked through now. We're basically there. And also we're slowly building up the fond in the bottom of the pan as this gets crispy. It's also why I left it in bigger chunks so it doesn't get too overcooked as we're doing this. Look how much it's shrunk already. So they say to reserve some of the fat out of there. I don't like doing that though. I like to leave it all in there. You can always skim it off afterwards. Hi Wilson. Trekker, you're always aggressive with your food. That makes me happy. <laughs> Wilson. <laughs> I've been known to kick the shit out of a <laughs> out of what? <laughs> out of a chicken before I cook it? No, not like that. It's a BB Bubs, my guy. How are you doing? Can we get a shout out for BB Bubs today? I think we good, guys. Let's take that out. I'm just gonna pour it in a container on the side. Turn down my pan a little bit now. A piece of sausage fell on the ground. I have to eat it before it dies. That's a tragedy. 
Yum. Okay. So if you wanted to have a really thick sauce, she said, put some flour in right now and make a roux. Or just a glaze. With some chicken broth. She like fried garlic in the pan mince, but we're just gonna do some nubs of our roasted garlic instead. Cause that's yummy. Burner 69 thank you very much for that follow. Reminds you of childhood, the pasta bake. Is that something your mom or your parents would make for you? Add oregano and pepper to fresh tomatoes and put them on sandwiches, Katniss says. That is a great tip. A lot of people don't realize that you should season your tomatoes before they go on a sandwich. It really makes it better. Let's do a very generous scoop of roasted garlic because, well, we can. I'm just going to scrape the pan with this spoon. I'm going to turn this up a little bit more. Let's see if we can get the fond starting to come up. Now that this is simmering, we want to scrape all that brown goodness. And the garlic will also start to soften. So that was half a cup of chicken broth. Could also use wine. Just gonna put the rest of our garlic away. That was a good spoonful, Bonk. Bonk approved. Made your husband a sandwich. Instead of using mayo, you used French onion dip and added chips. Is he like loving life or what? Now you're making me make some more onion dip today to eat my ripple chippies. <laughs> okay, I think we do tomatoes and then the cream. It says cook this until it's reduced. Should only take a minute or two in total. And then we add the tomato cream and sausage back into the pan. Taste that at that point so we can add more seasonings if we need. He's gaming with his brother right now so you, do, you don't know what he thinks about it. Nice Greek. I love that. Are you okay if we use our duck broth to make the ramen and then put pork belly on top? Samo's gonna be so happy that you requested that with your pots and pans points. So guys, Greek requested ramen with pork belly and veggies miso soup base. Yes, please. This looks like it's almost reduced. We're getting there. I'm gonna let it go a little bit more. miso duck soup base. I have the miso already. I keep mine in the freezer so it doesn't go bad because I definitely can't use it up quick enough. So I got my shiro miso here. Two liters of duck broth, good to go. We just gotta bring Samo to pick up some pork belly. I already have the ramen noodles as well. Or wait, do you want alkaline ramen noodles or you want straight wheat noodles now it's time for the tomato you see well my stovetop is uneven but i can tell like there's nothing really in the pan on that side let's pop this in this was a little bit of sauce as well as some san marzanos that we just crushed up with our hands to get the rest of this out i'm just gonna pour the cream in Give it a swirl. I'm gonna leave that container to warm up on the stove. That's how you get the cream out better. Can we judge it out like this? Oh, 
That was a little trick I learned working in restaurants. That's gonna get thick and delicious. Both of those things were pretty cold when we added them, so it'll take a moment to come back up to a simmer. Maybe if we add the sausage, it'll help it heat up quicker. Mm, put all of those drippings in there. That doesn't go down the drain. It looks so pale right now, but let's just let it come up to a simmer. So now I'm going to add my little pinch of chili flakes. When will this be for? I mean, you let me know, Greek, because I always work it around your guys' schedules. Your stovetop leans forward as well. Yes, yeah, someone definitely sat on this or there was kids jumping on it. I have no idea. That was one like pretty small pinch. So I'll go a bit more. Maybe even more. And then if we feel like it's not spicy enough when we plate it, we can always do more chili flakes on top. Shiro miso is sweeter and mild light colored miso paste. Yeah, that's why I often choose it because it's quite versatile, right? Compared to some of the other misos you can get. It's a little overwhelming when you go to the store and try and buy a miso too. You got to know which one you're looking for specifically. Guys, are we even going to like fit the pasta in here? She's going to be tight. All right, while we're waiting for this, see how the warmth warming up the little bit of cream? It just comes out of the container so much more. I learned that when I had to make like so much bechamel sauce. Okay, we're gonna slice up our matza to top and bake the pasta with. And because everything is hot, we'll probably just pop it under the broiler. Call it a day. So I got a good deal on Fior de Latte, I feel, at Costco this week. It was $9.49 for two 500 gram balls, and I already ate some of this one. Fior de Latte is just a soft mozzarella. Just grabbing a little cutting board. Red bean pastries rolled in sesame seeds. That does sound yummy. Take our little chunk out. And we can simmer this for a few moments because you want those flavors from the sausage to get imparted into the sauce. And you'll notice that the sauce kind of changes color as it simmers together. That's what you want. All right. Don't go too thick on these slices to put them on top of the pasta because this is like a wetter cheese, right? You don't want it to go soggy. So don't put a super thick piece. What, we'll do five to distribute around. I think that'll look so good in that pan. Turn that over back into the brine. It could be any time next week, Greek, or the week after. Where is the best place for me to message you to talk about this and organize it? It is a very good cheese for pizza, Michael. That's funny you say that. So they make this cheese, Fiorda Latte, in a couple different sizes. 
That's so funny you say, hey, this probably is good for pizza. Because we used to use this on our wood-fired pizzas. But they also come in like the little bocconcini size. So you can just like take a handful, put your little bocconcini fiorda lattes on and it like perfectly melts. Oh man, just so easy. Okay, we'll mix everything. What do you think guys? I mean, as far as ease of mess, I'm thinking pour the sauce into this pot to mix it all together and then put it back in the pan. Because I don't know if we'll be able to mix the pasta into that. Let me grab a spoon to taste this too. It's starting to look nummy. We haven't really added any seasonings yet, so we'll definitely need salt and pepper. Mmm. It tastes like tomato soup. It tastes like Campbell's tomato soup, that mixture. <laughs> I got a little bit of spice on the tip of my tongue, so that's good. I think I'm gonna throw in some extra dried basil leaves. Or actually, no. We'll leave the basil flavor because we got pesto. Pesto is the best dough. Let's see where this brings us. You don't look old enough to have 10 years as a chef. Well, I'm 32, turning 33 in like a week or so. But thank you, I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> Now we're really bubbling. Let's turn this down. This is just gonna be for me, so I don't really care about double dipping. It's seasoned. Now I can like taste everything. Taste the herbs, I can taste the sausage flavors. It's so crazy like how um, if you don't have enough salt, you don't taste everything. How is this consistency? I think we'll let it reduce a touch more. Are you hearing jingle bells? I think from the follow earlier. And then I don't have parm, I still just have aged gouda to use, so that's what we will microplane over the top of everything. It's ba it's Christmas music? No way. I deleted all the Christmas music off of my playlist. I must have missed a song. <laughs> this meal looks cheap to make. It is quite inexpensive. There's not a ton of ingredients that you have to use to make it. A can of tomato a couple Italian sausages, some cream, chicken broth, and pasta. That's really it, cheese. <laughs> you know you're high, but is it Christmas? We just go back in time. I gotta scroll up more. Okay, Greek says message him on Twitch to organize it. Thank you for telling me that. <laughs> also that bonk. Yeah, the sauce is boiling, Kate. I don't think germs will stand a chance for double dipping. You got a cup of heavy cream. You don't know what to make with it. Do you have lemon and salt? You can try to make creme fraiche. Sour cream. How's this now? Okay, that looks pretty nice and thicker, let's say. I'm okay if it's a bit saucy too, right? There's nothing worse than a dry ass baked pasta. 
<laughs> Chest. I've been there. Just make whipped cream and eat it. That'd be something I would do. Chicken cordon bleu, yes please. Banana foster bread pudding, you guys. All right, we got our cooked noodles. This is gonna be a little bit risky, but we got this. We're gonna gently pour into this pot our sauce that we've been working on. And in the meantime, we turn our broiler on to high. And so if you're gonna broil something in a pan, you wanna make sure that pan is able to go underneath the broiler, right? Scoop out all of this. Ooh, that is heavy. I did some like dumbbell workouts yesterday. I'm feeling it in my forearm, oh no. You know you're sore when you can't hold the pan up. That's humbling. Okay, I made a mess of the pan, so I'm just gonna give it a wipe on the side. I knew that was gonna happen, but I think it's easier to do this than to be splashing sauce everywhere because you push the limits too much on the pan. Yeah, good one, Bonk. Put the cream in a jar and shake it up and make some butter. Even I've never done that yet. I am definitely like a rosé sauce fan, I will say that. This looks like a pretty good ratio of everything. I don't think we have too much sauce. I don't think so. Chinese food, German food, or a steak? I think German food sounds good. What kind of German food? How do you find the recipe? So I always link my recipes in our chat as well as our community Discord channel if you ever want to make them for yourself. So now we're just going to pour this Gently back in. And I wasn't being too rough mixing it, right? Because we don't want to break up the pasta noodles. And nor should they be falling apart at this point. If the noodles are starting to fall apart, that means you probably cooked them a bit too much. I mean, my noodles are gluten-free, so I think they're a bit different than just a wheat noodle. They're always a little bit more like kind of mushy. And then I'm seeing some of this sauce is like not really over here. Give it a little shake and stir to what you think it needs to make sure everything is evenly distributed. There's like no sauce on this end. Is it going to the oven? It's going to the broiler. Okay, so look at this. After I slice the cheese, it's got this like crazy film of moisture again on it. Ah, the cheese juices. They're everywhere. It's not buffalo matzah, just a fjorda latte Greek. Close. Probably the closest thing to it. Welcome in, my dusty pirate. How are you doing? Did you make it home yet? Okay. Into the oven. Broilers on high. It should be glowing red. Oh, yeah, yeah. We got our cheese. Besto. Grab the microplane.
Fork. Just got home. Nice. Good work. Glad you made it safe. It's just melting. Just melting. Okay, let's grab a plate. Because it's that time. This is more like a bowl dish, though. Probably a bowl for this one. Nice big pasta bowl. Oh yeah, what was the joke that we were saying? Dust, I said a joke yesterday for you, and I forget what it was. A pirate of the desert? Something about dust. <laughs> but just know, we were thinking of you. It wasn't anything bad. <laughs> It's like you instantly think when people say that, don't worry, we never said anything bad. It's like, what did you say? <laughs> Looks like it's almost stopped snowing already, so that's awesome. Nowhere near what they said. Hey, so was your brother like really stoked? about his film being at that festival. I've never been to a film fest like that. The cheese is just like melting into the noodles. Let's see if it actually browns up at all. I mean, even if it doesn't, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> Bob. Just starting. We'll give it like 20 more seconds. It's the third screening. The next screening of it is in Maryland. I wonder if we have any people that live in Maryland. They can go watch it. He'll never know. Who's gonna know, Bob? No one's gonna know. I lied, it wasn't browning. It was just a piece of sausage sneaking out underneath. Liars. Let's open this. This was my cheat. I haven't bought this, I think, since we lived in Vancouver. But that's interesting. Made with 100% imported Italian basil DOP. I didn't know that. I think this was $11, and then usually I just keep this in the freezer. Yes, there's also a Discord. Thank you, Cookie. So every week I post our schedule for the stream, as well as the recipes that we make. I would say, yeah. I'm gonna turn the broiler off. Yes, thank you Katniss for sharing your creations. It's like my favorite after stream. It's like, oh, what has happened in Discord over these last few hours? I like how the noodles got kind of crispy looking on top. That's always an interesting textural contrast. Crispy, cheesy nudes. Am I even allowed to say that? I think this is good. Oh, so it is because we have people posting recipes all the time of what they create. You just have to scroll up a little bit. 
if you don't see it right at the bottom there. Or the best thing of Discord that I really love is the search function on it. So if you know what you're looking for, Italian sausage pasta. I'm gonna not spoon the pesto on this. We'll just pop it on the plate. I think we need a photo of it just in the pan by itself first though. <laughs> You're not supposed to put pasta in your shakshuka. I guess the cheese kind of does look like eggs, hey? You gotta go from this end too. Spoon, we gotta use the red spoon. Thank you, Wilson. It was so dang easy, you guys. So dang easy. Oh yeah, we made the crackers early on. So here they are. It was my first cracker rendition, so I didn't know what to expect. I was scared that it wouldn't be like crusty if it wasn't like brown, but it is. But look at them. I put everything bagel spice on top. Is that going to be something I make all the time? <laughs> yeah. Parmesan is a fancy cheese. It was so easy to us to make the cracker. Okay, we're going to go for this. Maybe we should leave the cheesy part for on top presentation. It's not dry. We're gonna do a double cheese stack. Why? Because we can. I think that looks great. I'm just going to fill in the gaps with a little bit more noodle and then we can get our pesto on there. I'm not going crazy with the pesto guys. Just a couple dollops around. Probably only like three. Hi, Uncle Stinky. Hope you're doing okay. Feta on this? Mish, did you do it though? Because you can't expect me to if you didn't. This looks absolutely fabulous. What the heck? Why is the simple food like some of the best? You'd pay 20 bucks for this? Holy shit. Come on over then. <laughs> okay, look at this. Gotta get that in the other camera. It would be great with a glass of wine. Yeah, you don't have to put the wine inside. You can just leave it on the side to drink with your meal. I don't get pasta very often anymore. So that is like seriously so good. Oh my God. It's perfectly spicy. Like just that little bit on like, not even the tip of your tongue, not even the back. It's just like chilling in the middle of your palate. And then it dissipates quick.
the sausage chunks. Let's get some pesto on that bite. And I made this with a gluten-free pasta, guys. If it's not messy, it's not right. I'm really happy. That's going to be great eating throughout the week. And something that we know is whenever you make things like this, it tastes better the next day as it sits. So I'm excited to see how it tastes tomorrow. Very satisfying though. You grilled halibut for the first time last night. Grilled halibut is really good. It was very thick, almost like a steak. That means it was a good like fish and it was a big halibut. Mm. If you wanted more veggies in, a really easy one to do, just stir in some like chopped fresh spinach. When you mix everything together and then bake it. But I'm not like missing veggies in this. The tomatoes are really nice. Great sauce. Is that the piece of roasted garlic clove? I haven't found a piece of roasted garlic yet. I haven't noticed biting into one. But there's a lot in there. Hmm. How you know it's spicy? Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> Ooh, I need to open the window more. As the heat's completely off and the window is almost fully open in the living room and I'm still dying. Whew. Relic. Yeah, you missed it. It was so good, dude. I'm so excited to eat this. I'm not going for a walk today. I'm just going to eat that. I might even have a nap. I've been saying that the whole weekend of streams, but today might be the day. That could be good too, Katniss. Even just like, what? Simple frozen veggies if you wanted to go cheap, cheap. Sundays are always short and easy streams. Yeah, good one, Hake. Less than two and a half hours for this one. And like, I took my time. We chatted a lot. Okay, we're gonna go see who gets the raid today. Finishing up. I can't believe that the weekend's gone already. Wow. Oh guys, I applied for a job again today. I got actually a direct email to the recruitment line for the mine. So I just emailed them directly. So I'll let you guys know how that goes. Cause I'm still holding out to go work up there. I haven't got nothing back, like just applying online through their site, but I saw my Inuit friend posted this email. So I was like, yo, Thanks guys. That's the only one I'm going for. If I don't get that job, I stay home. That's it. Other than that, Samo should be coming home on Thursday. So I'm very excited to go pick him up. I actually have peace and quiet because Wayne is going away to work tomorrow for probably four weeks. So I have like four days to myself, which I'm so dang excited for. You don't even know. Get the house all ready for him. I think that's all I got for the week. Is Kat finishing her Moogle cake today? I think we should raid Cosmicat, or sorry, Cat of Whimsy. She used to be Cosmicat because it looks like she's finishing decorating that cake. We raided her on Friday. Or Kanara, what's Kanara doing? We haven't gone there in forever. Excuse me. 
Belcher the ruler the chef. Irish food? Okay, let's go see. Mish knows all about a moogle. She would. Okay, Kanaro is another food and drink streamer here on Twitch, guys. She has a lot of experience canning and preserving. So if you want to know about that stuff, definitely go pop over there. Give her a follow. Ask all the questions. Say Kate sent you. Lovely human, though. I've never met her in person, unfortunately, through all the years of like Twitch cons and stuff. But always a good place to chill on a Sunday. So I hope you guys have a good rest of your weekend, wherever you are in the world. Get lots of good rest. And stay tuned in Discord. I'll let you know what's coming up this week for foods. She's a professor at U of Oregon. I didn't know that part for food science. Amazing. Okay. Love y'all. Thank you for all of your contributions this weekend and just being here with me. That's what I care about most. Okay, I'm gonna hit that button, guys. Let's go see Kanara. Love y'all. See you on Friday, 11 a.m. Pacific. Bye!